verse 9 of the 15th chapter of John, and I'm using a common English. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. When you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends when you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love one another. May God add for us now not only the reading and hearing, but also some understanding of this. It's the Holy Scripture, the Word of God, the people of God. Pray with me. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. For you are the potter, and I am the clay. Amen. No greater love. As we're talking about Mother's Day, it just seems appropriate that this uh, John 15, this, this part of this text comes up as to where Jesus is talking, and he's sharing with those disciples and the others who are gathered with him and he's clearly laying out for them that you have a new commandment that this is the most important thing as he's talking about abiding in my love as i abide in the love of god and last week we were talking about that connection of how that all works out and our need to be obedient our need. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. It's not a, well, I, I really would rather you. I mean, it's a commandment. And, and what he is saying is love others as I love you. It gets hard. It gets hard. We know Will Rogers and, and the legacy of Will Rogers says uh, a stranger was only a friend that he hadn't met yet. He literally said that he had never met anyone that he didn't like. Well, some of us might question that. Some of us, you know, in life sometimes, for whatever reason, it seems that there's a person now and then that we just seem to clash with. Maybe for no, no unknown reason. Uh, we don't have a, a real reason to dislike them. You know, maybe we do. but. Occasionally, we just run into that person that, for whatever reason, we just seem to clash with. And it's hard, but he's not asking us. He's not suggesting to us to like someone. He's commanding us to love them. What does that mean? What does that mean that, that he's commanding us to love them? Love one another as I have loved you. What a message for Mother's Day. And I've mentioned this before, but it just seems to me that, that over and over and over again, Confederate Railroad had it right. When, when they wrote the song, and uh, Denny Mayo James and Dean Hicks wrote the song, uh, Mom and Jesus Always Loved Me. And you may recall in the frame, it goes on to say, even when the devil took control, Mama and Jesus always loved me. This I know. Uh, some of you may recall that that country uh, song from several years ago, but uh, again and again when we come to Mother's Day and we also opened up this John 15 text and talking about abiding in the love of God, 
uh, living our lives in the love of God and knowing that Jesus had commanded us really and truly of one thing. Really and truly, you know, of one thing. And of commanding us to love. Commanding us to love. Love God with our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. And to love others as Jesus loved us. Well, you might ask then, well, how did Jesus love us? In this text, in this very text, he goes on to tell us, to tell us literally that he loved us to death. He loved us so much that he was willing to lay down his life for us. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, you know, uh, if, if you follow my commandment, if you love me, and if you love others as I have loved you, and then, amazingly, he calls them friends. Then you are my friend. And I have laid my life down for my friend. How many of us want, how many of us really truly want to be able to say that I have a friend in Jesus? That, 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 that you know, I know that, that I have a friend in Jesus. It was one, one old fellow was out walking one day and, and he came along this peasant on the side of the road who was knelt down in prayer. And as he looked and he thought, he said, wow. And as he walked up to him, he said, he said, you must, uh, you must really have a deep relationship with God. And the old peasant looked up and said, you know, he's pretty fond of me. That sounds a little arrogant, doesn't it? But it's true. It's absolutely true. And do we all have that understanding that if we can be obedient to God, if we can follow this commandment that Jesus has laid on us, then we can say that we have a friend in Jesus. And regardless of what we've done, anything that we know that well, Mama and Jesus always love us. Even when the devil took control, even when we we're going the wrong way. I don't know how I don't know how it works out, but somehow or another, it seems like regardless of what we do, that well, Jesus and Mama already knew. No, don't ask me how. I don't know. I'm not a mama. Maybe some of you mamas can tell me. But it just seems like Whatever it was, you know, as I got older and looked back, I'm like, thank goodness. Thank goodness because sometimes those little words of encouragement, those little words of advice, and those little questions sometimes, sometimes you know, possibly could have made the difference in where I ended up. I read a story about one young lad who was watching his mom as she was covering her face with cold cream, and just completely covering her whole face. And the little boy was looking, and he was all curious, and he said, Mama, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm making myself all pretty. Well, then in a little bit, as she got all the cold cream on, and she began to clean it off, and eventually had her face quite clean, and the young man became even more curious at this point, and finally, Curiosity got the best of him, and he said, What happened? You give up? <laughs> <laughs> Moms have this way. God has this way and is instilled in moms and mothers ways that they can clean things up. Even in our own lives, they can clean things up. I'm sure sometimes that we've read, and some of us remember Art Linklater, but children say the darndest thing. D.D. Jake says children will teach you how to pray. Irma Bombeck says all moms have found themselves on their knees in their children's rooms. They said the hand that rocks the cradle is not getting enough sleep at 